Good morning and welcome to Tuesday's morning prayer. Good morning. Let us prepare our hearts before we spend our time with our beautiful Father. Let us pray. We will proclaim the name of the Lord. Ascribe greatness to our God. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the opening canticle, a song of God's mercy. God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, and raised us up with him, and made us sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And the psalm today is Psalm 124. 125 and 126. If the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side when our enemies rose against us, then we would have swallowed us alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over us. The raging waters would have gone clean over us. But praised be the Lord, who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we have gone free. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. Those who put their trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. As the mountains stand about Jerusalem, so stands the Lord about his people from this time forward forevermore. For the scepter of wickedness shall have no sway over the land apportioned to the righteous, lest the righteous set their hands to do evil. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, to those that are upright in heart, as for those who turn aside to crooked ways, let the Lord lead them away with the evildoers. And in Israel let there be peace. When the Lord turned again the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those restored to life. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord has done great things for them. Truly the Lord has done great things for us, and therefore we rejoiced. Turn again our fortunes, O Lord, as the streams return to the dry south. Those who sow in tears shall reap with songs of joy. They that go out weeping, bearing the seed, shall come again in gladness, bringing their sheaves with them. Lord our God, our Creator, Redeemer and Sanctifier, we ask you to cleanse us from all hypocrisy, to unite us to our fellow men and women by the bonds of peace and love, and to confirm us in holiness, now and forever. Amen. And our first reading this morning is from 
2 Chronicles, chapter 11. When Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, he assembled 180,000 chosen troops of the house of Judah and Benjamin to fight against Israel, to restore the kingdom to Rehoboam. For the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God. Say to King Rehoboam of Judah, son of Solomon, and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin, Thus says the Lord, You shall not go up or fight against your kindred. Let every one return home, for this thing is from me. So they heeded the word of the Lord, and turned back from the expedition against Jeroboam. Rehoboam resided in Jerusalem and he built cities for defence in Judah. He built up Bethlehem, Etam, Tekoa, Bethsua, Soko, Adullam, Gath, Merashah, Ziph, Adarim, Lachish, Azekah, Zorah, Ajalon, and Hebron, fortified cities that are in Judah and in Benjamin. He made the fortresses strong and put commanders in them and stores of food, oil and wine. He also put large shields and spears in all the cities and made them very strong. So he held Judah and Benjamin. The priests and the Levites who were in all Israel presented themselves to him from all their territories. The Levites had left their common lands and their holdings and had come to Judah and Jerusalem, because Jeroboam and his sons had prevented them from serving as priests of the Lord, and had appointed his own priests for the high places, and for the goat demons, and for the calves that he had made. Those who had set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel came after them from all their tribes of Israel to Jerusalem to sacrifice to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. They strengthened the kingdom of Judah, and for three years they made Rehoboam, son of Solomon, secure. For they walked for three years in the way of David and Solomon. Rehoboam took as his wife Mahalath, daughter of Jerimoth, son of David, and of Abihail, daughter of Eliab, son of Jesse. She bore him sons, Yehush, Shemariah and Zaham. After he took Makar, daughter of Absalom, who bore him Abijah, Ate, Zizar, and Shalomith. Rehoboam loved Makar, daughter of Absalom, more than all his other wives and concubines. He took 18 wives and 60 concubines, and became the father of 28 sons and 60 daughters. Rehoboam appointed Abijah son of Makar as chief prince among his brothers, for he intended to make him king. He dealt wisely and distributed some of his sons through all the districts of Judah and Benjamin. In all the fortified cities, he gave them abundant provisions and found many wives for them. The second reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 12, beginning at verse 12 through to 25. As soon as he realised this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many had gathered and were praying. When he knocked at the outer gate, a maid named Rhoda came to answer. On recognising Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the gate, she ran in and announced that Peter was standing at the gate. They said to her, you are out of your mind, for she insisted that it was so. They said, it is his angel. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking, and when they opened the gate, they saw him and were amazed. He motioned to them with his hand to be silent and described for them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he added, 
tell this to James and to the believers. Then he left and went to another place. When morning came, there was no small commotion among the soldiers over what had become of Peter. When Herod had searched for him and could not find him, he examined the guards and ordered them to be put to death. Then he went down from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there. Now Herod was angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon. So they came to him in a body, and after winning over Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they asked for a reconciliation, because their country depended on the king's country for food. On an appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes, took his seat on the platform and delivered a public address to them. The people kept shouting, the voice of a god, not of a mortal. And immediately, because he had not given the glory to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God continued to advance and gain adherence. Then after completing their mission, Barnabas and Saul returned to Jerusalem and brought with them John, whose other name was Mark. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Let us pray the canticle, the song of the blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what is right, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for mercy shall be shown to them. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now collect for today, third Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask. Say through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let's turn to our intercessions. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by everyone, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all bishops, priests and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who govern and exercise authority in the nations of the world, that there may be peace and justice among all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have compassion on those who suffer or are in grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you for all your saints who have entered into joy. May we also share in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The morning collect. Lord and Heavenly Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. Keep us by your mighty power. Protect us from sin. Guard us from every kind of danger. And in all we do this day, direct us in the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. And it'll be the Archbishop tomorrow morning. And I'll see you Thursday and Friday. Keep warm today and have a blessed day.